Hola. Bonjour. Ni hao. Moi. Privet. Konnichiwa. Oh, good. I've got, I've got a new one this week. Okay, ready? Go on. Oshio, which is Cherokee Indian, which goes back, which is kind of like a did you know fact, right? You know, like how in all the, the old films, they used to go how. Well, just right. doing how for like a native Indian, right, is actually like watching a film from Europe and having a guy from, say, Portugal and someone walking in and going, bonjour. You know, there was, there was literally hundreds and hundreds of native Indian ways to say hello. So that is a Cherokee Indian hello. Well, thank you very much for that one, Olive. Uh, everybody, however you say, welcome wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Normal Not Normal podcast. Slam dunk, are you ready to make me? Anyway, welcome, guys, to part two of our interview with our fellow Harry Potter castmate, Ivana Lynch. Um, Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing seeing the response from everybody, so we're sure you'll thoroughly enjoy part two. Well, I've got to be honest with you, we do talk a bit, um, well, we talk about a lot of a whole different range of topics in part two, so hopefully it'll broaden your mindset, it'll open your eyes to a lot of different issues, but more importantly, it'll bring a big smile to your faces. Very much. We've had, we honestly we had a great time speaking with Evie. I was speaking to her actually this week, and it seems like she really enjoyed it as well. And also, I see she's got a book out next. In she's got a book coming out at some point soon, so that's very exciting as well. Check her Instagram for all more information. But hey, should we just crack on with the interview? Interview. I think so, it wasn't really an interview, was it? Before, it was just I was going to say interview. Sort of yeah, it sounds like that. But I was going to ask James, what have you been up to this week? Just gone. This week just gone, I've had a lot of good fun because we had three clear days of skies in the evening. So I have been stargazing. Uh, I managed to get my astrophotography skill up a little bit more. As you can see, I managed to f- set my SLR to my ca- uh, telescope. Going a bit nerdy now. But I was able to get some photos of the Orion Nebula, which was very good fun. But I'll tell you good what, Orion Nebula. it's bloody cold this time of year. It is a bit. It is a bit. You know, like, you know, when you take a photograph, though, at night through, yeah, obviously, like, like through your telescope, do you have to set it on a timer to take it? Because sometimes, obviously, when you've got the exposure out really, really long, even just the movement of pressing the, the trigger can make it blurry. Do you have to do anything? Right, well, if like you that? want me to really bore you, so. Not that, really, so, just a yes or well, no would be good. Well, I can't really, but that telescope is designed so it, it actually tracks with the Earth's rotation. So, because you have to keep the camera shut up, you have to keep the camera shut open for well over 30 seconds, preferably a minute. So in that minute time, the Earth is going to have moved. So thus you're going to have a lot of movement on the picture. So right. that moves with the, with the Earth, still looking at the same position. So then you're going to get a perfect picture. There you go, nerd alert. But can I bring you on to my did you know, which I discovered the other day. Okay, so... Did you know, I'm very excited about this one because it's a bit silly, but did you know, think of a, so you know you've got the planets, Mercury, Venus, ourselves, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. What is after Saturn? Uh, say again? What planet is after Saturn? Right, so go, go through them. No, okay, you'll take too long. Mercury, hang on, <laughs> no, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. That's right, Uranus, Yay! the funny-sounding planet. But it, it depends where you're, where you learn it from, isn't it? Uranus, Uranus. How many times can I say this? Basically, that big gas planet. <laughs> so it I was discovered. What we used to call the big gas planet. Yep, Mister Uranus. So this was discovered on the seventeenth, uh, on in seventeen eighty one, pre- specifically the thirteenth of March, in Bath, England, by William Herschel. Now, he wasn't the only person to have seen it, but he he saw it. And originally, he thought it was a comet. But, however, he sent a message out to a few fellow astronomers around Europe, and they all determined that the way it was moving, it had to be a planet. Thus, it was deemed a planet. Also, it didn't have a tail. So, originally, they needed to name it, obviously. And because he had essentially discovered it, he got the naming rights. But he wanted to name it after a king we had in England at the time. 
he wanted to name it after King George III, so he wanted to call it Georgium Sidious, which essentially means George's star or George's planet. Now, as you can imagine, the rest of the world weren't too keen on this, having a planet named after an English king. Yeah. Right? An Anglican king at that. And they flirted exactly. with a few different names, but they decided, let's stick to the planets. So Mercury, Mercury's mum was Venus. Then you've got Mars. Mars's dad was Jupiter. Jupiter's dad was Saturn. And do you know who Saturn's dad was? Keith. No, it was Calius or Coleus. But that's Roman, so they decided just to put a little spin on it. So the Greek version of that mythology was Uranus or Uranus, so that is why we have now got a planet called Uranus. It would have been so. A whenever lot you look, they just called it George, wouldn't they? Well, exactly. So King you George. could have had that. It, it was, was King George. Name. So in eight, this is in eighteen fifty. They decided that is what the official name would be. But if you ever want to just throw someone, you could just say, "I like the planet George." Yes. Also, right. Going back to your original thing, where what did you say the chap was called from Bath? Uh, William Herschel. William Herschel, right? So, you know, William's in his in his thing, and he's looking around, and he says, "I need to, I need to contact some other astronomers to see if this is what I think it is." It's not like he sent a tweet out, you know, or even what a telephone call is, at no. the time. How long would that have taken to come to the point? Actually, yeah, that is a planet. Like, you know, he gets a letter back, "Hello, Bill. Just to know, yes, I'm sure that is. Hope you're doing well in the five years since." I sent this letter. Take care. Bye bye. It probably it's took a lot quicker it? than it probably took a lot quicker than than five years. But yes, I know what you mean. It was, but they were literally all over the continent. So you had some in, in Eastern Europe, some in Western Europe, and then if you have ever seen the night sky with no light pollution, they're amazing. How many stars there are! So the fact that they were even managed to discover that one, and then obviously later on came Neptune. It is amazing that they even discovered these planets even move in yeah. orbit. How okay, here's, here's, a, here's a question for you. How come they called it Neptune, right? Because that's got nothing to do with the sea. And obviously King Neptune is like, you know, aqua-based. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, we'll, we'll name, we'll, we'll come back to Neptune on a later show. How's that? Yes, I mean, Neptune, okay. being the, okay. Neptune being the god of the sea. I know they uh, that was originally an idea as well for Uranus to be called, actually. So oh, right. maybe they liked that so much they jumped in. But we'll come back to it when we know the truth <laughs> on think, that one. Right. Do you think do you think they just fobbed off the guy who said, Yeah, no, I want to call it Neptune? I said, Yeah, I'll tell you what, the next time we find a planet, you can call it that. Do you think that's probably kind did. of what happened? And then he probably sent a carrier pigeon <laughs> and once upon a time went, I found one, I found one. All right, then. Anyway, that sounds very good. And the best thing is that they found all those amazing planets without a telescope that moves with the rotation of the Earth. Well, did they? No, I you're completely so. correct. No, you're completely correct. But I've got one more fact just to bore you because I'm all about planets at the moment. Saturn, Uranus's son. So that planet, so did you know the Romans, being all Roman, they named everything in the sky, essentially the, the, the seven major light forms that they see in the sky after the gods. Yes. Sol, the sun. sun. Luna, the moon. Yep. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, God of Saturn. War. Mars right. is the god of war, wasn't it? Which is a bit weird why they called it that. Anyway. And is that, and is that why there's always this like, thing that Martians are going to come and invade? Maybe. You think? Well, if, but you should say that they're actually putting a rover on Mars this week, so we'll be able to learn more, won't we? Anyway, back to Saturn. I said in a previous podcast how Saturn originally, when Galileo first looked at it, he thought that the rings were actually a handle. But did you know that Saturn was named after the god Saturn, who was the oldest god that they had, who was also the god of art, uh, agriculture, so he moved very slow us like Saturn but they liked him so much that they named a day after him which still exists to this day Saturn's day or as we now know it Saturday why is that got to, what's what's Saturday got to do with agriculture the god Saturn yeah was also the god of agriculture 
Yes. Are you with me? So, but, like, Mars yeah, was yes, the god yes. of war. I get. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. But why is? I'm Saturday? just throwing in facts. I'm just throwing in facts here. So, who was Tuesday? That's that's a fact for another show. Anyway, enough about all this learning stuff. I mentioned Luna. Guess who played? Here's my segue. Guess who played Luna Lovegood in Harry Potter? That's right. It's Evie Lynch. Welcome everybody back to part two. Oh, this is my segue coming out. You ready? He kind of reminds me of what a dancer would look like. Evie, you've done some dancing, haven't you? What? <laughs> Do you like that? What was it like? What was, so? What was it like dancing with the stars in the states? Um, I remember when you said that you were doing that, and I was completely in awe of. <laughs> Of you doing that, so and jealous uh, and yeah, yeah, jealousy yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is it's awesome to do. Well, you can tell you're jealous dressed like that, but <laughs> yeah, Evie, what was it, how did that come about and what was it like? Oh, it was the best. Oh my god, if you get asked, do it, please do it. It's so much fun. It's one of the most fun jobs I've ever done. Um, it's a but lot, you can it's a dance. lot of work, yes, but not <laughs> most people can't, and it's really not. Obviously, it helps if you can dance, but people just love the journey. Actually, I started to notice, and that's what my dance partner would talk about, because it's not just about the dancing. It's like it's almost a political campaign trying to win people over and tell your story in a way that engages them. So um, it kind of helped that our scores started a bit low and we had to like fight. Whereas people who started really high and were naturally just amazing dancers, um, they struggled to keep the votes. Some of them got voted mm. out. So, mm. But it was so fun. Um, how did it come about? I think I got asked to do the Irish one and I was like oh please can I do this and you know there's a whole thing about actors doing reality shows like oh there's a snobbery around it and because I still act and I don't want that to affect my career but um but it's just so fun like dancing getting to be trained by a professional for hours for it was nine weeks um and so they they asked me to do the Irish one and I said please can I do it I'm age was like no, fine. She was like, look, if you're going to do this, let's let's go big. And she called up the American ones and she was like, you have to give her um, a, sp- a place on the show now or she's going to do the other one. And you can't you can't do two. You can't do both. Mm. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, got a place um, on the show. And it was so fun. It was the best. I just loved it. Yeah. Do it. Definitely do it. It's did such you, a great did challenge. Did you feel that? I mean, how many how many million of people are watching those shows? I don't know. A lot. Yeah. yeah. So did you did you feel the pressure, or was it just a case of you can just see what's in the studio, and I mean, let's face it, you're very good at dancing, so that obviously takes away a lot of second guessing yourself when you're doing it. Um, no, it was terrifying. It was the most scared I've ever been on set. Like right before um, you do the dance, like I would just be, oh, I would feel sick. It's that feeling of being on a roller coaster where you're like, why am I doing this to myself? Like this is horrible. Um, and because it's like you're doing something you're not profession professionally trained at that you're an amateur so there's a high likelihood that you'll fall and it'll be embarrassing and all this stuff you've worked for will just you know you'll mess up but then again like like a roller coaster as soon as you've done it it was just such a buzz you'd want to do it again it felt really amazing just going through that it it made me feel like oh i can i can do anything i can handle any nervous situation this this felt like yeah the biggest kind of stakes thing i'd done and how much training were you doing a day and five or six hours yeah it was a lot so how many calories were you burning during that day (laughs) i don't know but yeah people did start to lose weight by two week week two week three um but then you just start eating more (laughs) so (laughs) yeah that's what Um, i found when i do um if i ever do bike riding the highlight of doing a big bike ride is that you can eat as much as you like when you get back to justify it (laughs) pasta yeah Exactly. I've got. I've got to be honest. I mean, I knew that I was coming on today with you two guys, so I was inspired by your yoga techniques, both of you. So I tried oh. to do a bit of yoga today. Good. How'd it go? Um, I was swearing at the person who was giving me the instruction on the uh, the video, <laughs> but I suppose that because it's just weird. Like it just feel you just feel it. I certainly feel it. Like the joint behind my knees. I know it sounds silly. Yeah. But like when you're extending and stretching and everything like that. Yeah. 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 It's hard. Different, you yeah. should go on the show. Would you ever reach out to them? I don't think I need to at the moment. I've already got the uh, the outfit, but no, I'd probably one day I'd like to do it. You're probably. not wearing yeah, enough like spray something. tan. You 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 get weekly spray tans. Get sprayed with it. Oh, yeah, wow. they're very serious sell it about to that. Him. You're selling it to me now. Yeah. No, yeah, but if you both definitely. went went on, that would be so funny because you'd be competing against each other. Yeah. There'd definitely be a competitive element to it. I Evie, think. I get the Macarena confused. <laughs> <laughs> but they've had crazy. They've had like Sean Spicer on the politician. And he did get voted out quickly. And they had Carol Baskin on this season. That was weird. 
So you you'd manage and you'd grow and you'd get to love dancing and you and the connection you have with your partner is so unusual it's so unique because you're going through this weird thing and it's it's just you and them. You're there's a, a couple yeah there's a couple of camera people in the room but yeah it's you get really close with them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, cool. Yeah. But well, speaking, maybe, maybe maybe for one day maybe come for one on. day. Yeah, do it. And they love it um cuz everyone else is American. The one thing I would find I found it hard like as an introvert I think as an actor, you, you can be an introvert, you can be shy, you can be a bit, but on Dance with the Stars, you're, it's your personality as much as the dance. So, yeah. so many of them were just like, work in the camera, hey guys, vote for me. And I was like, you know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't match that. So that was, that was no. a struggle, but, but I think yeah. you would be able to snap into that. I wear, I wear, I suppose you'd have to wear a t-shirt, you know, we'll dance for votes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But they would love it because they. I think they like that uh, when when British or Irish people come in because we, they think we're so uh, like different. <laughs> they think we're exotic. <laughs> Look what he's wearing. Yes. Hey, yes. Hey, I'm, I'm matching. I'm, I've got. I've, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that I've thrown this together. I mean, you're dressed like a librarian, so I wouldn't. That's really the look I'm going for today. That, see? Yeah. To yeah, always slag yeah. each other off this much without yeah. your clothes. Always, really. I think. I, hey, James, have you got have you got your glasses? Because if you did, you'd look like the Brad Pitt character from um, The Big Short. That's good, isn't it? it? I think that's kind of what he's going. For. Yeah, there he is. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. There you go. Cool. But Evie, we <laughs> <Yeah>. also <laughs> segue again. We, um, are, I think we. I want to hear the of... segue. How, how are you going to segue this? There aren't many. Of I did. I've got a segue. I've got a segue. I've got a segue. I've got a segue. Okay, go on. Okay. So speaking of being exotic, we filmed in Dudley together. <gasps> yes, we did. That was Many so years. funny when I saw you on the set. It was like awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The so, Lenny um, Henry. Yeah. So we did uh, Danny and the Human Zoo. So it was set in the 1970s in um, in the Black Country in England, and it was uh, yeah that was that was great. I really enjoyed that, especially with the whole the whole site because our um, my mum's side of the family are all from around that that region, so in terms of our accent, how we did it all, and everything like that, that was it was quite uh, natural for us. But it was great to see you yeah. on set as well when you when you were there doing it as well. So fun, yeah! And it, the costumes were great, and yeah, I wish we could all work together more. When people mm. ask me that, oh, what actors would you like to work with? Like my friends, people, because we didn't really get that many scenes together, and yeah, that was really fun. It's easier to work with your friends isn't it definitely especially yeah, when yeah. because when you start a new job it's it is like your first day at school every yeah. time you start isn't it but that was quite cool because it was i guess it would be a bit like college i <laughs> mean there were new people but we knew each other as well which was quite good yeah fun. yeah, yeah. Aww. good times yeah. that was very good yeah so apart from, so you've done a lot of acting uh a lot of dancing you're very big into your charity work as well with unicef and veganuary January, oh, yeah, January. Mm-hmm. Um, and your Chick Peep, is that Chick Peeps, right? Chick, Chick, Chick Peeps, Peeps yeah. podcast. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's my little podcast. Um, yeah, so I went vegan about uh, 2014, end of 2013, because I'm vegetarian. I always loved animals, um, and when I read this book, Eating Animals, I was like, oh, this is me. I just need to be doing this. Um, but I find there's such a difference with like people perceive veganism and vegans in a negative way and they think we're all just like you know obsessed with animals or that we're all we're all activists and i think people are intimidated by veganism for that reason because they just they think if i did that i'd have to give up my whole identity and i wouldn't be and and they see it as people always say oh what what do you have to give up and i think that's the wrong way of thinking about it it's like you have to think abundantly you have to think about what you can bring into your life it's like a new culture almost you're learning a new way of eating and being and all that um so i'm just trying to that that, that's what inspired me to start the podcast because i was like i think i've got this lifestyle figured out in a way that feels abundant and fun and you know i hang out with my vegan friends and we just chat and we have a laugh we're not always crying over cows like sometimes but not always we talk about (laughs) other things and i so i just wanted a podcast where we can like show veganism as being really normal and that you don't have to do it perfectly and there's so many there's that it's it's complicated you know like you'll certain vegans um for example 
I th- well, I think vegan, honey is now not vegan, but there was a time when honey was like up to personal discretion. So there are little, there is nuances like that within veganism that need to be discussed and that people disagree on or people disagree on how to do activism. Some vegans will say we shouldn't be doing animal welfare work. We should only be um, trying to free the animals rather than getting them better living conditions and things like that. And then, but I'd be one of the activists who thinks, no, we have to do all of those. It's, it's a stepping stone it's process. Process, we're not yeah. yeah so those conversations i wanted to have on the podcast and just you know have fun conversations have deep conversations and just show that you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to do it one way because i think there are so many people who agree with veganism but they're just they don't know how to do it and they're intimidated and they think they they meet those judgy vegans and they think yeah. well if i'm going to get judged and harassed for just doing a little bit then i'm not even going to bother with it and it tars the whole vegan movement so sure. that's why so we've got me and three other friends we do it and we interview a new guest each week and just try to make it accessible to normal people yeah right, cool i mean I'll, I'll be honest i'm i'm a meat eater i've got leather shoes leather jackets but can you so can, can you tell me three three things that people can use uh, or can do so we use like fewer animal products in food fashion beauty yeah. like that whole Price and I'm put, put pushing on the spot there. So if you if three you say, nah, things, nah. what to like help simple, animals? Simple or stuff. To be vegan? So, well, simple stuff like say. So I'm not. I'm. I've got to be honest. With you, I can never see myself going vegan. Okay. Okay. But three Fair things enough. I could do because obviously there's there's, yeah. there's studies what say you can have like a week or two weeks, whatever, plant based. Yeah. Is obviously better for you. So again, a, a stepping stone like that. Anything you could suggest to do? Definitely. Yeah. That type of thing. Um. What well, doesn't involve tofu? Tofu's great. You just need to learn how to cook it right. Um, I would say, first of all, I would say just, hmm, no, I've got loads of thoughts crowding. I'm like, tell them this, tell them this, tell them this. Um, Try other foods. You don't have to like cut out things. So like try, so I don't know, what is your favorite meal to eat? Steak. Steak, damn it. Um, (laughs) Have you tried like Beyond Burgers and things like that? Yeah, it's not the same to me. It's not the you same. Don't but like I've, it? Got to, I've got to be honest with you. Well, I don't like I don't like beetroots. That kind of ruins. No, that but it's not. Why? It's you don't not like beetroot. No, but this doesn't sorry. taste like beetroot. I don't think you've actually tried. It. Have you tried the Impossible well, Burger? That's one they inject with beetroot, isn't it? So actually, no. Next time we're in Orlando, we're going to go to a vegan restaurant. And I'm just going to okay. try it. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I mean, I, I did try actually a couple of weeks ago. I made because I, I do love lasagna, and there was a um, a vegan lasagna. Well, I think it was vegan. I may have cheated with the the pasta sheet I had, um, but it was actually. What am I saying? No, no. There's no there's no food for uh, animal product that goes into pasta, is there? I'm, I'm uh, no, no. There can no. be egg, but it depends. There can be egg, yeah. So the, yeah. yeah, these ones may have had egg in it, but it was a case of where it was literally just a case of um, yeah. So you substitute it with other other stuff, and that actually tasted yeah. fantastic. Yeah. No. So okay, I would I would just try some substitutions. Just, just experiment. Mm-hmm. You can do things like you can do meatless Mondays. Um, you can do plant based before six. Uh, Jonathan Safran Four has a really interesting book called We Are the Weather, and it's about how if everyone ate plant based before six pm, um, the climate crisis would be kind of healed. Like it's not, you know, we've kind of done too much damage that's not going to go backwards. Um, yeah. But yeah, it would yeah. make it would be a significant difference and. The art, the vegan argument with that is like, well, not everyone is going to go upon base before six, so we should the ones no. who care should do it all. But but yeah, you could. That's one way you could do it. Um, the, I mean, you can just start supporting. You say you have leather shoes. There are so many great le- vegan shoe companies. You could just look up somewhere. I can send you some. I can send you some resources. I'd be interested. I'd be interested in it. It's just, as I say, it's more a case of where it's just a case. This is what I've I've. I've I've grown up with, I suppose. I'm used to yeah. it. And it's not for me. It's not a a bit. Now, as I say, I may be opening myself up to people coming at me, as you say, because there is the very people who are very into that. Like, no, no, you are wrong. You are wrong because you have a leather jacket or a goat skin jacket or whatever like that. Um, but you just don't see it that way. Like, I, I, as a vegan, I feel sad. I think we've all been socially conditioned to not see or feel for animals, and that's what yeah. I think. We can't blame people for that. We can't blame farmers who've grown up five generations of farmers and they see 
cows as products as things as machines and they they can't connect with them they can't feel their pain and like some farmers they talk about when when they take the dairy the calves away from the cows and they bellow they grieve for days and I, i've heard farmers talk about how that actually made them stop farming but most of them are desensitized to it most of them have to just be like oh that's just a sound they're making rather than well that cow is grieving and heartbroken and, and in yeah. pain so i think uh, the vegan community needs to be our, more understanding of that, that we don't have that experience. I didn't grow up having my whole livelihood and my whole identity um, dependent on farming animals. So it's very hard to, to tell people to like, you have to go vegan now. So, um, and I think you, you'll have that too, like convenience. You've been conditioned to see, yeah, leather is what we wear for shoes. Um, so, yeah, you kind of you do have to fight against that if you if you read yeah. and look about those things and and, yeah, and sure. I I personally like as a vegan I feel we have a responsibility because they are suffering so much and we're using all their products. We have a responsibility at least to have welfare conditions. I think we have a responsibility. Yeah, I agree. I agree. To I totally it. agree. I mean, I, I remember at school doing a thing on um, battery farming, for example. Yeah. And that was shocking. Yeah. And it's, but then I suppose you go back now further along, it's like, well, free range, what does it mean? No, not much. To a point. Do you, do you know what I mean? So there is that, there is that evolving of, of standards to the point where it's, yeah. it's not. I mean, I think it's all just about being more conscious, more mindful. I mean, you, and you asked for three things, but I would almost just start with educating yourself more about the things. Cause like when I first went vegan, I think I read one book and then I felt I have to do this I should and it was an obligation it felt like I was guilted into it and that made me actually quit because I was like this is too hard and miserable and I'm always thinking about animal suffering but the more I read the more I was like oh I don't want to participate in this so it wasn't somebody forcing it on me so like I can't make you make any decision or give you veganism it has to be from within that you're like I don't want to support this suffering. And like what you say of you watch a documentary like that in school or, or something about um, uh, factory farming, we see that and it's really traumatizing and we don't want to do it. But then we have the privilege of just going away, going home and forgetting yeah, about it. Yeah, itself, yeah. And it's happening all the time. And I, because we're benefiting so much from it, I don't think we should. I think we should force ourselves to look at those things. And I know it's hard because it's like, oh, I have to care about everything. You have to care about the environment now. You have to care about anti-racism work. And you're a bit like, I'm so jaded and exhausted from caring. I don't have time to do this. But you don't have to fix it all in one day. You don't have to veganize your whole life in one day. But I just think the more aware you are of these things, the more you'll consciously make better choices. Maybe just start with like, you know, David Attenborough's new documentary. On Netflix. That's, um, that's yeah. a really good one. And it's yeah. it shows how it concerns people and the whole lot of us. It's not just animals. And he's also, he. I don't think he's even advocating veganism, that documentary. He's saying eat more plant-based. I think I think that's yeah. that's the difference, isn't it? It's, it's, I think sometimes if you go cold turkey on something, you're more likely to stop. Yeah, yeah quit. To a point in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, quit and, and then be resentful. Miley Cyrus yeah. has done that. She was a big vegan um, activist and ally. And then she just quit and she's turned her back on us now. So I'm saying us like we're a cult. But it feels sometimes <laughs> it feels a bit... Well, she, she then started being like, oh, those vegans, those judgy vegans. And it's like, you were one of us. You don't have to just like throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can... It's fine if you want to eat a bit of fish. It's I mean, you're not vegan, but you can... You don't have to go the opposite way. You don't have to be so black or white. And I think a lot of people doing that is more tied up in their egos and their identities. They want to take a side. They want a label. But I think we all need to integrate more. So there shouldn't be any... Again, we're going completely against pub rules of... <laughs> you're said you're going against I'm pub going rules. Against pub you're rules. going against pub rules. Right, I'm going to go against pub rules. But there shouldn't be any team, should there? It should be, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, respect what's that? It. And then you explain it. Mm. Exactly. There should be respect about it. So even if it's just, so I do, I haven't even told anyone on this, but I do once a week, I do vegetarian for a day. I know it's not going to change, well, it's not going to change well, but equally it's something I cut in a way now. I look forward to doing it because it's something different. That's so good. And it's that kind of challenge. So it's just a little bit of what's new and then who knows where that may progress to and if it doesn't, but that's how, yeah. That's yeah. How Have I you roll. watched Game Changers? Uh, I don't think so. Oh my gosh, watch it because you're a runner. You'll be really fascinated by the science in that. I was going to say, you mean the running show, right? 
No, well, Game, Game Changers is a documentary on Netflix about oh, right, no. uh, plant-based athletes, and they talk about how it improves their recovery time and everything. Okay. Yeah. Well, well there's, a, there's actually a football team called Forest Green Rovers who are 100% vegan. Wow. They play in the fourth tier of English football. Oh, are and, they good? Uh, well, they're a professional team. Yeah, but if they're not but good, we don't want them. <laughs> their whole their whole ethos of the club is plant based and all that kind of stuff. So sustainability, cool. sustainability, exactly. So I'm currently them in FIFA. I've just got them to the Champions League final. So watch this space. To Are be you the controlling first. their diet on FIFA? They like, they take care of that themselves, burger. but I think oh. that's why they they've got so far. So I'm planning to make them the first ve- all vegan team to win the Champions League. Oh please, <laughs> let me know when you do. That'd be fantastic. I'm wow. so productive with my time sometimes. Yeah, I can tell you've been working really hard, James, on this one. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, that, that brings be- up a good question then. So when you have a vegan pizza, do you have pineapple on it? Oh no. Oh, damn What's it. wrong with you? Why I would thought you do that, gonna, James? You I thought you were going to get in there. <laughs> every bloody week you do this. There's no such. There's, there's no. There's no true way you could put that on a pizza. I don't get people mixing flavors. Like no, you know, no, exactly. S- Just... Even sweet and sour. I'm like, no, I, I like them separate. I love pineapple. I love pizza separately. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Have it for dessert. Why are you so feeling so strongly about this? It's not strongly against. It. I I just get funny looks when um, we. So last season we I mentioned ham and pineapple pizza, Hawaiian pizza essentially, and I pretty much had all of Italy come at me, and uh, rightly so, a load of, rightly so, a load of uh, pizza purists. But then I had other people saying, "Oh, oh no, no, I definitely have pineapple on it." <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> These are the same people Big who debate. put chocolate sauce on bacon. Oh, oh God! Who does? No. Just saying, oh, I people. I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing. Or Maybe the Americans do peanut butter and jam, peanut butter and jelly. Jelly, yeah. yeah, it's so quite weird. good like that. Is it? Yeah, it's all right. I was okay. always and banana Nine's actually, bit. peanut butter and banana. That's, okay, that's let me round living. this back. Okay, I'm going to round that's this. Um, I'm going to get the. Uh... But before we round it up, <laughs> just for me, will you please watch Game Changers? Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. That's all. That's all you have to do. Yeah, no, I will. I will. And keep I going anything, with the vegetarian day. Can... Anything that can give you a personal gain in uh, athletics will definitely be up yeah. my street, providing it's legal and not any like 1990s Tour de France. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but Evie, so going back to the whole normal, not normal. I want to see a segue on right where's now. You, where's, where's your segue from that? So for your normal Evie is eating plant-based foods. Yeah. So that goes into normal, not normal. So what does your normal look like now? My normal eating? No, in general. What is your oh. normal right now? Even, oh, although lockdown, so like, what's your, what, well, yeah, what's your typical day? Has that changed during lockdown? Yeah, um, um, I get up, not a morning person. I try to be, I always go for like a workout or just something movement because that puts me in a good mood. Um, and I do like a few emails, podcasts and stuff like that. And I've got, um, a company kinder beauty a vegan beauty company and then i write i'm writing at the moment a lot so i'm really trying to be disciplined but it's hard because you're like i'm the only one who cares about my writing um but yeah so that and then in the evenings i go to circus classes which i love i was, yeah, I was going to ask about this because you're always on instagram and i remember the first time i saw it i thought is that evie <laughs> So what what is it you do? Because it's not like you're riding a little bike. You're no, yeah. <laughs> no, it's aerial. So it's hoop or silks or trapeze. Yeah, but trapeze silks silks are hard as well. So hard. Have you done them? Um, well, my wife used to do them, and I went along once to pick her up, and I thought oh, I'll give that a go. I think yeah. I made it about three foot off the floor. Really? It just oh. Wasn't working. Yeah. No, but, but it's amazing. The more you go back to it. Like the first class you do, it feels like the hardest thing. You're so sore, hoop is very sore, and it just feels impossible. But it's amazing week to week, even just going for an hour a week, you make little improvements and suddenly you're able to do things that you just didn't think possible. So it's very cool. Hmm. I think if you just stick at it, yeah, if you want to go. What would you do in the circus? I'll be shot out of a cannon. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll be the one lighting the fuse. <laughs> I don't think that's a full act. <laughs> yeah, well, you I mean, can only do limited, one it's, really, limited, yeah. <laughs> it's limited in its variations, to be fair. But yeah, it'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be that type of thing for it. In terms of like dealing with fans now, are you still on? Are you, do you still see yourself as part of the let's call it the inner community or the outer community? Do you still see as a fan looking in, or do people come at you with like? Knowing, like knowing, obviously knowing you for being in the films and stuff like that, would mm-hmm. you say that your relationship to the online presence has changed in any way? Or yeah, definitely. That... I don't stalk everyone on Muggle Night anymore. No, no. I, I stopped that. <laughs> well, I actually drew back from that probably on like the sixth and seventh movies because I found it was just really alienating me from everyone. And I really felt, I felt, I remember I felt sad after the fifth movie because I went back and I, I didn't keep in touch with anyone. And I was like, this is sad because I really like them all and I want to be friends with them. So I made a concerted effort to dial down my crazy fan stuff. And, you know, it's annoying me now. So I don't know when this interview will come out. So I hope I'm not spoiling anything. I think it'll be fine because we're doing this quiz, this Harry Potter quiz. And when, so a trivia quiz. And when Amy messaged about that, I was like, damn, I spent the last 14 years trying to be less obsessive. And now I have to get it back. I have to study. Um, So I don't... Like, I still love it, and I still, anything that J.K. Rowling drops, I read. I read all her detective novels. Um, I just, yeah, I, and, and anything on Pottermore, although it's not Pottermore anymore, it's Wizarding World. I, 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 I'm so in that. I'm so into checking that stuff. But, um, like, I don't wear my Harry Potter t-shirts anywhere. Mm. I can't mm. wear that on the tube, even though I'd like to. I wear them for like pajamas, um, but but no. So I I'm I'm aware of it all, and I feel like I have the perspective. I understand them. I understand what a big deal certain things are. Very into Fantastic Beasts, but I try and play it down. Going back to the the fan side of it, because I had a bit of a, a weird experience the last couple of weeks. Great, like, I think it's really great when people get into it. So I'm having a hard time of it. What do you do to relax or, or whatever? I think stuff like that's cool. But then, like a couple of weeks ago, I won basically saying, "If you don't reply to me, I'm going to kill mm-hmm. myself." Yeah, tonight. I, yeah. And you get that side of it. So there's a, there's there's a fine line, and I think people sometimes don't get that that I that, that line. Ha- it gets yeah. lost, you know. It's really hard, and I think you have to have your boundaries really tight, like yeah. you, us personally. But I have that all the time, um, especially with Luna, because people, it's often people who are bullied or who are depressed, they feel like she's their friend. And that, that thing of like, you were in my dream or we're meant to be best friends. And I oh, I treat that stuff very cautiously. I tend to actually not reply to most of those things because I think it's, um, it's, the, the, it's codependency. And it's also not you they're talking to, it's their imagination of you, what they think you are. Um, mm. But I always, when I see that, or when someone's saying, you're my best friend, you just don't know it, even though I was that person, I really do think, no, focus on your friends around you. And like, I try to, when we do conventions and when people tell me these stories, I really try and be present and like, you know, talk to them and listen to them. But uh, taking on fan mail, like, I am actually writing to a fan at the moment who's really lovely and she's going through an eating disorder and something I really understand. But, you know, it's that, that. But that's a lot of energy. I spend two hours writing her a letter sometimes and it's a lot of just, it's emotionally, it's a lot of cost. And I really do think, you know, I'm not, we're not qualified therapists, we're not professionals. Yeah. And so we shouldn't be taking that on. And, but that's, that's dysfunctional when someone does that. And I've, I have seen that too. There's one guy on on my Facebook page that I don't very much use. He was writing me a letter every single day. And I remember looking at him and being like, I wish he would just write a book. He could be a successful author. Why does he spend so much time writing to me? And he's calling me Luna the whole time. It's like, whoa, it's like this this guy's imagination has gone so just, he's taken it to another level. And so I don't reply to that because I'm like, that's enabling them a bit. They'll get attached and then you'll get, you'll pull back and you'll be busy and then they'll get annoyed with you and then they'll hate you and it's, it's very hard to balance. So I try and keep my distance. Yeah. Yeah. And find a thing through it. Cause we were, um, well, it's, it's weird. Like the other, the other week, um, there was a, someone who was basically impersonating me on TikTok. Oh no. They, yeah, exactly. Right. So they got like over 55,000 followers. So if you imagine, I don't know, imagine Yankee stadium filled with that many people but they think they're seeing someone else but it's not but so does he look like you 
No, no, no. They, they, so they'd taken videos, what I'd recorded, <gasps> and they'd edited them oh. to make it look like I was reacting to stuff. Yeah. So I was like, right, I'm calling you out on this. So I basically put down a very PC version of what I originally penned um, about, you know, this, this low life is doing this. I don't agree with it, everything else. Um, and then very soon after, they changed to Oliver Phelps' fan account. Um, but it was bizarre because, like, for every six or seven positive comments I got, saying thanks for telling us it's terrible that happened there would be one normally very aggressive negative comment about it like oh i'm offended that you'd be so cruel to the person who's doing that and defending someone who's impersonating you and which you know impersonation is technically harassment mm. um and it was just it just it blew my mind that there would be one that there'd be people who defend people who do stuff like that because it's trickery at the end no, of the day exactly and they can and- get really bad where they ask for money and things well, that's it, yeah, and can really can really push it off. Well, I think, yeah, some people said that they, that some people have done that in the past. And yeah. the fact that, you know, and, that, and the people jump to defend them on that. Um, I mean, like James and I, we never really talk about this type of stuff because it's how, it's who we are, you know, we're very personal with this type of thing. But, you know, we've had people impersonate us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, us, our family members, mm-hmm. friends, even yeah. Friends of ours, families. So my mate's wife had a fake account because yeah. people just try and get into private photos, private stories, and stuff like that of us. And you know, I just abhor stuff like that. It's just disgusting that people can actually find a reason um, to get into your or in their head they think, oh, this is this is perfectly logical and fine to do it. Mm-hmm. To just involve people, just invade people's privacy on such a level like that. And mm. then people wonder why we keep our personal life so personal yeah. and so quiet about it. So, you know, to, to, to people who are listening who either enable them and defend people, first of all, who do stuff like that and other people who actually do it, how would you feel if people did that to you where you didn't have, you yeah. couldn't say that you couldn't, you know, someone is talking on your behalf when it's not you. And they're misrepresenting um, you, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And they're, they're leading other people on and... There's there's a lot of damage what could come from that type of thing, and I just I just hate. I, th- I know that hate is a strong word, but I hate it. Yeah. That, oh yeah. That that, I that, agree. that is totally allowed to do because you wouldn't get away with it if you walked down the street and said, yeah. you know, I'm such and such. Yeah. Look what I can do, you know. And that is just yeah. As I said, I hate I hate that side of it, which is a real shame because I think 99 percent of the people we deal with have got great intentions. They are really really nice, and it's just great to have that relationship with. I don't call people fans, I call them people who support us, people support what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And it's just a shame that, that almost like, it does, it does taint you, it does make, as you say, it does make you withdraw, it does make you not... Not trust anyway. people, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, makes, it makes you... Like it you makes say, you it's, the, it's that 1% and a lot of it is just uh, obviously craving attention for themselves, but imagine what they could do if they put all that attention into themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you, yeah. Could, exactly. you could do exactly. some really That's cool stuff, thing, yeah. couldn't you? So. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and it's almost this thing of, I suppose, this defending offensive mentality. Oh, I'm offended that you'd call someone a low life for doing that. It's like, no, no, no I'm really not. It's really, not. it's really unhealthy. And I had that recently actually on... Um, I'm not on Twitter anymore, but when I was on Twitter, um, someone copied my profile completely and then they followed all my friends. So all my friends, but they're people like an actress I worked with one time, like yeah. who I don't talk to all the time. And she, and then I have to DM her and be like, that's not me. And the worst part, I find, I bet you find this with them as well, that, that it's so cringy how they think you live your life. So they post pictures being like me on a film set or just like this film star life that you would never do. And it's always <laughs> just like pictures of my face as if I'm so self-obsessed. And, but that's what they think you want to do. Yeah. Or, hey guys, yeah. I love my fans. <laughs> But there's, there's that as well. But then they then they'll take then they say then there's some people who take it to extreme. They're like, say, my wife had it for example. Like someone copied a load of like befriended friends of hers, friend of hers type thing, and then that type of thing about it. So then that brings me into it. I'm like, well, then she's got to suffer from it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a real shame. So yeah, I mean, my that's my that's my rant of the day. If you're impersonating anyone or enabling anyone to do it, think about what you could do if you actually did it exactly. for yourself. Exactly. Yeah, else. build up yourself. That'll, yeah. 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 Exactly. But. Uh, yeah, it just yeah. it just really really blew my mind. So I just thought you would have yeah. Oh no, big pet peeve. Yeah. I do. I and same as you were just saying. I get a visceral like anger. Like that's me that you're taking. You can't yeah. just. And they sneak. Sometimes they're sneaky. They stalk everything about your life and then they block you, so you can't see. And I'm just like. No, get your own identity. I worked really hard to be me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I doubt, I doubt anyone's going to be putting the, a schwa of combo like I'm doing right now together. But, yeah. you know, it's a, it is that. It is that Never know, might be setting a trend. 
<laughs> God, I hope not. But so, I mean, we're asking everyone this. What does normal mean to you? Normal. Boring, maybe? Um, right. Bo- or, or grounded. Actually, that I think it means grounded. Just like knowing who you are and what you need every day. Yeah, like what your boundaries are. Um, well, I think it's really important as an actor because every time you do a project you're thrown into an irregular situation and I've had this I'm sure you've had it on jobs before where you just give everything to it and then you don't keep your regular life going you let your relationships go crazy you don't do anything else and then it ends and then you're you're devastated and you don't have that so I think having yeah like a normal routine or just people who are always there or things you always do to ground you that that helps that helps you live a more crazy unconventional life and feel centered so yeah grounded yeah, yeah. yeah. what does it mean so, to you ah well What's no it? we we asked the questions here okay <laughs> <laughs> i haven't got an answer yet okay. that's, well, that's do, why i'm I, asking people to figure out what's that's I part of th- it really i do i do think you're right though like, as you say a constant i think is the the thing what what definitely helps you keep keep grounded as well because there's always some there's always something else going on yeah mm. yeah helps you just remember who you are i think yeah Mm. but i don't really get excited by the word normal i think i'm more into it now like i like as i say being grounded and having my things so that if something bad or hard happens i don't have the world it doesn't feel like the world has been pulled out from under you but yeah i don't get excited by the word normal it's a bit like (laughs) no yeah i I guess i guess thinking about it it's not you wouldn't say you have a normal day because that's a big general thing you may have a a normal day but then things you do in that day you're engaged in that moment right yeah yeah mm. there you go yeah. something but what would you if someone said to you like i don't like it when people say to me you're so normal or you're so um down to earth i'm like really that's the best thing you got from me <laughs> as you're on like your tr- be... as you're on your silks yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, I find that so annoying. I'm actually, my mom actually said this to me recently about my choice of boyfriend. She's like, why can't you just date anyone normal? And I was like, oh, because I'd get bored. But like that, <laughs> I just want, I want something interesting. I feel like my life growing up was so normal and boring and I'm doing things to try and make it not that way. So yeah, if somebody calls me normal, I'd be very offended. Right, <laughs> okay. 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 So on that regard then, what is the least normal thing about you like what's your your weirdness thing um i mean there's a list um probably how much time and money i spend on therapy and wellness stuff i talk to my therapist so much i talk to her more than my mom actually she i talk to her on whatsapp she's really nice about that stuff like we just have she doesn't say like you can only have an hour a week we have chats and stuff yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. And is that and is that a, a weekly thing? So if you don't want to talk about it, then no, no. I just brought it up. Yeah, no, no, I love no. talking about therapy. I'm like everyone get therapy. It's the best. Yeah. I've been in therapy since I was a kid, like since I was about ten or eleven. Um, and but I used to be embarrassed about it, and I used to be like my friend. Um, I used to. I actually though when I was that age. I thought she was my best friend, even though I knew my mom was paying her 60 euros a week. I was like, this is, it's, it's, that's, it's similar thing to with celebrities. You think that, that, that they're your best friend because you're sharing everything with them. And it's so, they're so non-judgmental. Um, so no, I, I know the boundaries now, <laughs> what, what, how to like manage that. Um, and yeah, I would speak to her, not every week. No, because no, no. it's more maybe like every six weeks i think therapy yeah, i'm i'm i'd be the i was gonna i was just comparing because i'm the same i've been going for probably about three years now yeah oh, great. Just, over, just over three years and originally it was like to begin with it was like once a week once a fortnight once a month now i found it's like six weeks seven weeks is a good period to yeah. build up enough to vent and then yeah. just have like a <laughs> an hour and a bit session of and... just like <sighs> yeah yes and have awareness because i think yeah. some people can get addicted to, th- to therapy and they're addicted to their trauma and their wounds like they they was like reliving won't... it 
yeah, they won't ever leave. And it's like, no, you actually healed this. Move on. Stop being mm. stuck in, in the past. So I, I think therapy is important. Like if you're going through a particularly challenging situation or have trauma to heal, I think it's important to go every week then. But then it yeah. gets to a point where it's like, no, no, you need to be a bit more independent and handle it a bit better. Um, but I think everyone should have a therapist because there's nobody in your life who can be that impartial. And no, you shouldn't no. and it's use definitely, people for that. Yeah. And the thing is, what I like about it is that it's not well. The thing that blew my mind, it's not like lying on a big black chaise lounge, staring no. at the sky, <laughs> looking, at, looking at random shapes. What does this look like to you? It's not that at all. It's literally sit there, get a, like, have a joke, have a joke with uh, the receptionist or whatever before you go in or before it was all done virtually. Um, yeah, have a joke with them about whatever. Yeah. And then, yeah, you kind of like back into it. So it's a, it's cool. It's a cool thing. But I never realized that you did it, for, that you've been doing it for that long. Yeah, yeah. I really went, I did a lot when I was younger because I had issues. <laughs> but, uh, and then I just, I loved it. And I think it's helped me so much. I think I would be a totally different person if I didn't have, if I hadn't had therapy. Um, just the awareness it gives you, uh, just makes you more calm. It makes you just able to handle situations better. And it's not like things become easier, like things like rejection and acting or just in your life or people or friendships ending or things like that they always hurt but you yeah. with therapy you have the experience to know how to manage it that you won't just like have a tantrum and ruin your life yeah, yeah. um yeah, yeah it's so great i think everyone should do you go james uh no he just dresses like like a stereotypical therapist that's i i yeah, exactly i i con people into into <laughs> pretending i no i don't simply because i for me, I've always found that being outdoors is my therapy. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, I think you can see behind me on my wall, they're pretty much all outdoors. Or nice. I've been hiking or... I think that's why I quite enjoy stargazing because you can't look at your phone because your eyes are going to be distorted so you can't see anything. So that's not on. So mm -hmm. you're literally like completely detached. And then it's literally just you and the universe. Wow. And, whoever, <laughs> and whoever's looking down. So... <laughs> it's, that's awesome. It's like, so that, that for me that that's how I how um I kind of untangle my mind. Yeah, that's and really good. You know that that you have that awareness. Yeah, I, I know that um, therapy works great for some people, and I mean I've never tried it, so I can't say it, I'm not saying it doesn't work. But I'm saying for me right now, mm. um, being outdoors definitely helps me, yeah. especially with my dog. Nice. But I know that you're there. You you've got your cat. Is your cat with you right now? Puff, Puff. is in the other room. Yeah. Okay. Mm. but she is around yeah very good and what so what so no go on well no i was just gonna say i think it is also like it's a unique relationship and it's quite hard to find the right person like i so i had this therapist in ireland who i've seen since i was a kid and i still see her for certain things but there was a point where it's like oh, i actually need someone closer in london but it's very hard to find because like someone that you really trust um yeah and will get everything so i think anyone who's looking for that don't give up if you haven't if you haven't clicked with the first one and trust your gut if that's not right don't don't go back but you'll find someone there's so many amazing therapists out there yeah hmm. what what else is coming up projects and stuff like that you've got coming up in in the future um well yeah it's a bit odd at the moment cuz everything you can't plan anything but i am writing a book um but i don't want to talk about it because it's not nearly done. Who, who sets that? Have you got a publisher and everything? Yeah, yeah, set got up? a publisher. Oh, cool. mm, yeah, and are there yeah, twins in this story? And um, are there are there image movie rights available? <laughs> I'm not thinking about that. <laughs> no, but I do eventually want to write. More, like, I want to. I really want to be a writer. I'm kind of. Right. I don't. I love acting, but I find the career challenging. It's hard to build your life as an actor, isn't it? Mm, so I, and you're such a creative person anyway so it's a great mm, way to get that out isn't it yeah and i just think writers are the most powerful people that it's not that i'm power crazy but like the fact that jk rowling like that's her world and i'll never yeah. do anything like harry potter that's just it's just i don't know how where she gets all that but yeah just the idea that you originate a story and then it all flows from there so yeah i hope this will be the first of more books yeah Brilliant. Very good. So working well, that's, on that. that that's you... kind of um, got me going now. So I normally ask people questions, which I always forget to send them, but I sent you them. Yes, so I'm glad. you did. But you I'm going to throw what? another one. Yeah, I did. Oh, I'm prepared. 
I'm rehearsing. But I'm going to throw another one in there. Okay. Because you just inspired me to add it to the list. What is your favorite book? <gasps> oh, favorite book. Oh my god. Um Well, I was almost so so professional and sent me questions, but then I just No, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> I genuinely love the Harry Potter books. Like they're my feel good books. I can just read them over and over again and they pull me in. Something about her writing, you just can't stop reading them. Um I, but I have I do have a few. Lolita is one of my favorite books even though it's such a messed up book. Have you read it? Mm. -mm. It's so it's like it. very uh well it's about the pedophile really. Um but I actually reread it recently. I found it really misogynistic and I didn't know it was that when I was younger. But there's something about it that I like. And I also really like one of my favorite authors, Joe Dunthorne, a book called Submarine. Have you, have you read that one or seen the movie? The movie's Not great too. Okay, cool. He's re he's really funny. I bet you'd like him. And he has a okay. book called The Adulterants as well, which is just about like 30 somethings living in London trying to buy houses and having an affairs. It's really interesting and funny. Okay, nice. Uh, so, your favorite song? Oh, I actually didn't. Oh, damn it. Oh, I should have thought about this. Um, that's such a hard one. How can you have one favorite song? What's your go to song? But it changes every every month or so. Probably, I really love the song, and it's on my acting reel, uh, Stubborn Love by the Lumineer, Lumineers. Yeah, okay. I'll say that Very one. good. Okay, good. What's your favourite film? Um, can I say a few? Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> I Origins, Dancer in the Dark, uh, La Fille sur le Pont, and Submarine, the book. The movie is just as good. And from every film or any film or TV, what's your quote that you would use? From oh, yeah. Of... From that French movie, La Fille sur le Pont. I actually don't know it in French, but in English it's, you look like a girl who's about to make a mistake. So cool. It's such a romantic quote. He, it's, it's just, oh, it's a beautiful movie. He, he meets this girl on the bridge. It's Vanessa Parody. She's on just her... She's at her wit's end. She's about to jump off the bridge and he's a knife thrower. So he's like, well, if you really want to kill yourself, just come be in the circus and you can take a chance. And he becomes her assistant and he throws knives at her. But it's just such a romantic line. You look like a girl is about to make a mistake. I love it. Nice. That's a good, yeah. that's, that's, that's a good line. Mm. That is up, yeah, that's up there with the best we've heard so far, definitely. Oh, cool. What's yours? Oh, I've got so many. Mine would be end of Rocky Four. If you can change, then I can change and everyone can change. Nice. Why? Because it like motivates you. Um, yeah, and it's the first one that came to my head just thanks. We were talking about Rocky Four. Yeah, <laughs> cool. What about favorite Harry Potter line? Uh, favorite one from anybody or one that we did? Anyone. Do <laughs> you don't remember? No. <laughs> I think I think mine because it was the ultimate you know block um, was just the whole morning. Oh yeah, yeah. Line. That was just you, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that cause was, it was amazing. Except, cause like in the actual script, it was just written down as just morning. So I was... Yeah. That seems a bit short-winded. You short -winded. put some layers to it. Well, yeah. you could either do it really aggressive. Yeah. Like you probably would do if you saw your sister making out with your best with your brother's best mate yeah or um or yeah or you or you just make it as awkward as possible which is probably more like i'd do yeah i loved it it was great that's so funny i didn't realize how much mm. you'd added to it <laughs> and also cool. if, you, if you're watching the background when i come in that scene i've been watching looney tunes before that like a couple of weeks before so i over exaggerate like bugs bunny did you know when he's trying to be on his tiptoes and he's really oh you do that if you watch it back that's what i'm doing in the background when he oh comes in. cool Oh, I have to watch it back now. <laughs> Evie, thank you so much for joining us. I've really enjoyed this. And oh, thanks. Again, we've never actually talked a lot about this kind of stuff. So Yeah, isn't that uh, funny? Yeah, yeah, it is. Bizarre. But thank you so much. I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. Thanks. And when you go vegan, you'll come be on my podcast. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much again, Thanks Evie. for having me on. It's been so fun to talk to you. Thank you very much, Evie. Um, I don't know about you, Oliver, but I'm... Um, very wide awake after that one, if that makes that sense. Was... I've, I've ne like we said before, and we, like we happened with Katie and Tom and Bonnie and Luke and people like that when we spoke to them before. We've been friends with these guys for a long, long time, and we've never spoken about half this stuff with them. So I was, no. I was blown. I'm still blown away that she had a bodyguard at school. Yeah, I mean that would be. Could you imagine how cool that would have been? As I said to Evie when we were when we were doing the talk, I thought like I'd be. 
I swear that person over there just made a move for me. Yeah. On the floor, bang. Um, but no, I mean, that's, I suppose that just shows that, I mean, when we were filming, we were totally unaware of, I suppose, the impact that it has on someone like Evie getting into the the films, not just in terms of being a big fan before coming into it, but also, yeah, that whole that whole sign of your life, her life had just changed totally. Like when we got in the films, it was a case of we're in the films. Life continued. We still walked to school. We still, the only difference is we had bright ginger hair. There was like life continued as normal to a point or as it, as it had been. Um, whereas for her, it was completely, like you could, she could, pretty much just say right my life changed that day for, for everything that went on and then I suppose everything after that as well when she got to a bit like she said when she went to summer camp type thing and the popularity and stuff like that like there is this big big um, shift in her life pattern so it was amazing to hear from her as to how that, that happened that was really really cool yeah and I think I think what was also what the hell was that Sorry, my uh, my air conditioning unit was going off, so I was. Uh, <laughs> oh, well done. Okay, yeah. Uh, what I also really enjoyed as well was hearing about her experience on Dancing with the Stars because I remember when she did that, it was I was so I wasn't even surprised that she did it because she Evie literally throws herself at anything that she does, mm. and is it's a real it's really cool to to see someone really just go for it, and Evie really is one of those people and. I remember the first time, I, I don't know if she'll hear this, but I remember when we saw... <laughs> she's gone now. <laughs> she's gone now. But when she was, I remember the first time we acted in a scene with her when she had dialogue. And I can remember being pretty blown away by just how into it she was as Luna. Mm. And that wasn't her pretending to be Luna. That was her acting and how good she was at acting. And that was bounced up even more. After that, when we did, I say Oliver and I did another production with her for the BBC, and she's playing a completely different role, but again, just so into it and so there. So I really do hope we get to see more of of, of Anna in in bigger productions after. But also, I want to know what her book's about, so maybe we can try and yeah. um, get some yeah, info didn't get out a of that. Last time, did he? No, that's our mission then for for later on. Okay, that'll be a did you know? But actually, there's a seg. There's a segue. Segue. On, Segway, then. I've got a few Irish did you knows for this week. Okay. Ready? Um, so, chup, chup, is... chup. no, no, this is my time, not yours. <sighs> Go on then. So, the sport that Evie was talking about um, that her dad really enjoys, and honestly, this is one thing in my life I want to do is go to a game with her dad for hurling, which is an Irish sport, which is one of the oldest field games in the world. And yeah, it's been it's... popular for over... 3,000 years. 3,000 years? 3,000 years. But the first time it's actually should, written should you down... Say, should you say 1,000 years? Depends where you come from. Oh, it but it's actually written down dating back to 1272. Right. BC. BC? There you go. No way. How cool is that? Another did you know... She mentioned the word submarine. Oh, that's a book, but well, I'm I going just, off can I just, can I just, can No, I just no, no, you missed it. No, no, you missed no, no, that. I want to no. go back to hurling. For those, for those people who are what, what on earth is hurling, it's a bit like lacrosse. Yeah, kind of. If you, if you had to like, give a rough idea of what it looked like, that would be it. But you've got a paddle. You've got a paddle, and you, yeah, and it's that's brutal about as it. hell by the look of it, yeah. But a lot of fun. Um, so another one is that Evie mentioned the word submarine as one mm-hmm. of her favourite books. But did you know the actual submarine vehicle was invented in Ireland by a guy called John Philip Holland? And did right. you know his and company submarine comes from Submariner? But his company was called J.P. Holland Torpedo Boat Company. That's hence where the word torpedo comes from. Oh right. And this is the final one. This will blow your mind. This will be one that oh, everyone... Sorry, sorry, I dozed off there. Sorry, go This on. will be one that everybody will say, ah, ha, ha. I uh-huh. remember this one. So uh-huh. Irish surnames, they're famous um, around the world, obviously, but some of them start with Mac or Muck, and some of them start with O. Or... Yeah. So Irish surnames that start with Mac actually means son of. All right? Ah. Is that a bit like the Dutch where it's van der? Sorry? Is that a bit like in, in Holland where it's van der? Exactly. That means son of, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Yes, but this is Mac. Okay, but Mac. Surnames which start with O, mm. i.e. O'Leary, O'Gara, you get what I'm saying. O yeah. means grandson of. It is, it is. It Thank is. you very you much. Could also say, did you know that the kilt is Irish, it's not Scottish? Yes. That was this week's Did You Know? But yeah, so Ivana, thank you so much for joining us this week. It was a lot, a lot of fun. And I'm still really um, in awe of how open Evie is. And she always has been with us and very, yeah. very cool to talk to. And like we said, we, we, we try and stay pretty... Non, What's the Non-political. Word? Well, nothing. Well, not even that. And but stuff not, like that. Well, we can't, we try. We try and dive talk, in. If we, do, but, if we do, if we do talk about stuff in a serious topic, we try and put a kind of, not make light of it, but we try and not be too dour and boom. And I think that comes into like when Evie was saying, I never realised that she had her ther- she'd been in therapy for a long time. And when you say in therapy, you think sometimes you hear, oh, I'm in therapy. You suddenly sometimes people mean that you live in a, you know, in a an establishment what deals with that type of thing as opposed to like she said she just drops her therapist a text or meets up every six weeks which is yeah a bit like me every six weeks go and have an unload yeah and that being said oliver so um obviously we're very lucky to have people from all over the world listening in right now so thank you very much for joining us everybody and if you have had any um, thoughts or wants to contact anybody to talk about any mental health issues or anything really there's some links in the bios for today either in the podcast or in the youtube where hopefully you will find someone to talk to and a there are many 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 good people all over the world so please check it out and always speak to someone because everyone is always only one call away speaking well from getting help from, yes, getting exactly. help. That's basically it. Yeah, I mean, like, as I've said before, like you wouldn't leave a broken arm to just get better on its own. You'd seek medical help for it, or you'd seek someone. You seek the assistance of someone who knows what they're dealing with. Don't leave a broken mind or a broken spirit uh, to get to get sorted. So, as James said, there's links in the bio to uh, different companies that we think would be able to help you out in some way, or if maybe they can't, they'd be able to direct you somewhere. What can do, but never suffer alone. Exactly. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for listening this week. Uh, Thank you very much to producer Alice for making this sound very smooth. Uh, And guys, thanks a lot. We will see you next week.